your 40 out just have an Earl Grey tea. Welcome back here on the Good Morning Artesia Radio Show. I'm Gene. Linda's here as we get through our Friday. And I was just telling you off air, this is one of the weirdest economic situations I have ever seen. Oh, yes. You have, you have people who are getting tons of money, mm -hmm. relatively speaking, you know what I mean. A lot more than what they had. A lot more than what they had from the government. Yes. Whether it's money for child care, whether it's money for having kids, whether it's money for not working. I mean, there's just yeah. all this yeah. money that's just flowing out from the state and the feds. So people have money to spend, right? Because we're apparently, giving them all this government. Any, yeah, yeah, they have all the, they, they do, have yes. they have money to spend, so they're sure. covering their yes. expenses and they and, and whether they're working or not, they're getting money. Uh, if they have kids, they're getting money, so they're getting all this money. So they have money; they can go out to eat, they can buy things and all that. Have you seen the car dealers' car lots? They're empty. They're empty. They can't get cars. Well, uh, the chip computer shortage. chip. Yeah, yeah, the computer shortage. chips are. You going into a furniture store? No, they can't. They can't get furniture. What's the problem there? Price of wood. Oh, some yeah. of these other things that are going yeah. on. I mean, it, it's it's the weirdest darn economy I've ever seen. You can't drive anywhere and not see help wanted signs. Oh yeah, because the people that are sitting home on their backside are making money and they don't have to work. But yet they want the businesses open so they can go out to eat. Well, guess what? If you don't go get a job, these businesses are not going to be able to stay open. Yeah. Which is going to put more people out of work. Who is going to sit on their backside doing nothing? Drawing income from the uh, Yeah, from, the, the from government the is printing yeah. in the back room like, you know, they just go down to Walmart and buy a ream of paper and knock off some more. <laughs> well, that's what that it easy. seems like. Yeah. No, no I, I agree with you. Which it's is so stupid. They have no... I don't think they thought through the chain of events that this was causing. No, I think they thought entirely All through. All the way through that businesses, oh no, this isn't going to just open business. This is going to decimate them because they won't have the workers to be able to stay open. Right. Well, it's, it, I think it's a planned thing because I think it's a planned backdoor way of elevating the minimum wage. You drive to a lot of these places, and they're paying 13 14 15 bucks an hour to... to Try to get people to yes, come to work. You know, to drop the fryer basket in, in, the, in the fry machine. People are getting 13 14 15 bucks an hour for that. And, and then, of course, you know, your hamburgers are now 7 bucks. Yeah, inflation <laughs> is more now than it has been in how many years, it oh, said? It's, it's, 30 it's, some 37 years? Yeah, well, and I was... I was going back and forth with somebody this morning and I, you know, and they were showing me, uh, where was this from? This is from the GOP. So, I mean, you can take it at, yeah, at, as, with far, a as, as far as you want to, uh, accept it. Um, it, it may be true. It may not, but I mean, it is, it, it, it's put out, that's the source. Okay. There you go. GOP, uh, gas is up 45.1%. Energy is up 24.5%. Fuel oil is up 44%. Used cars and trucks are up 45%. Oh, I just had a friend sell their 2014 vehicle because the dealership begged them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't have to sell it. It was a spare kind of, uh, hey, you know, do you want to sell that? We'll give you, it was almost what they paid for it, brand new in 2014. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in mint condition yep. because they didn't have any used cars. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's kind That's, of pathetic. I, it's, you know, I think I think I ought to sell mine, but then what am I going to drive? <laughs> well, you have a couple of extras. You yeah, can, but I you can't tow trailers out. with them. I can't, no, you know, no, no, haul no. stuff around. So I'm kind well, of... Well, I was just thinking of, you know, yeah. get rid of the little ones and keep the big ones and look no, at the space No, I don't want to get rid have. of my little ones. But <laughs> uh, anyway, food is up 2.4%. Clothing is up 4.9%. Transportation service is up 10.4%. So this is all the, you know, leading to all this in, yes. in, inflation talk that uh, that we're talking about. It is, it's just, it is a weird, weird time. The lumber shortage. Now, some of the lumber futures are starting but to come down. Come down. Yeah. But you still have a bunch of wood in the system that was bought at those higher prices. So it's going to be a while before mm -hmm. the before the lower priced lumber bought at the lower future prices gets gets out in there. I mean, it's not a it's not an immediate thing. If somebody no. bought it at X, they yeah. got to sell it at X to get the money back that they spent to get it. And even though the future stuff that they're going to get well, is Well, try be, building a house right now. 
Oh, I know. It's, and it's then affected when all lumber, that. hopefully, mm -hmm. comes down to perhaps what it was, reasonable, and yet you want to sell your house. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not going to get that extra lumber cost in your house. You know, it's still not right away. two no. bedroom, two bath, yeah. whatever, or three, you know. Yeah. And uh, just because you got screwed and had to pay more for it doesn't mean that you can sell it for that price. Yeah. No, it'll it'll be a while before you yes. be, before you're able to recoup yes. that. You can't just flip it or Oh no. Uh -uh. Ex expect it to go. Yeah, go it's, price it too before. Yeah. No, I don't I'm Sit I don't down want to. when you hear the price. <laughs> I know. It but but that's what I'm saying. It's 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 the weirdest set of circumstances yeah. that yeah. I think I've ever seen and and cuz there's been inflation before. Uh, not, not like this. But, but this this seems to be pretty rapid. And it doesn't seem to be getting the coverage in the mainstream media that it would were the president somebody named Trump yes. or Bush or Bush yes. or Trump or, yeah. or somebody like that. I'm just thinking about that. The last 20 somebody years. Somebody that actually cares. Yeah. Honestly cares, not just saying oh we're doing it for the american people no you aren't you're a small group of people doing it for your own self-interests yeah you're not doing it for the rest of the country give me a break yeah you know i know better yes there's people out there that will drink the kool-aid and believe all this crap that's being thrown at them mm -hmm. do your research history happened it happened and we don't necessarily want to repeat all of it but right. if you don't learn from it what is it when you make the same stupid mistakes over and over and expect a different outcome? Oh, that's insanity. Well, that too. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, you're not going to get a different outcome unless you learn, hey, this was an error. Maybe I should not do this again. Yeah, what was, what? I, I forget exactly what the like phrase the is. Time. Those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Something yes, exactly. To, something that to that effect, it. yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. well learn people yeah taking that i was reading yesterday there was removing more statues somewhere mm -hmm. they've been up forever if they did not offend you five years ago they're not offending you now that's right and personally i think they all should be put back left up mm -hmm. it's history yep. you see it this was history this happened we don't want to repeat this particular incident that this person is known for yeah it's not hurting you. It's not taking up much real estate for that little statue to sit there. Mm -hmm. Get over it, people. There are more important things going on in this world right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what is it? There was something on the news the other day. Our Navy wasn't ready for something because they're more concerned about diversity. Oh, and this, Seriously? this head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is a, oh. is a wacko. I mean, he hates Trump, and he's, 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 he's a complete wacko. He does not need to be running... The military. Rush Limbaugh used to say the purpose of the military is to kill people and break things. That sounds good. I'm for that. That's what the military is for. Yeah. Killing people and breaking things. Anything outside of that is irrelevant and not to be mm -hmm. uh, thought of when it comes to the military. You want the military to be strong enough to be able to kill people and break things. There you go. And that's it. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It, it's, it's a weird you know, Weird time. Do you gets... remember anything like this? I mean, no, I, I ever, never, ever. I, I, I remember, you know, I was pretty young, but I remember the first couple of gas crises in the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, because my mom, I remember we were traveling across the state of Iowa in the family truckster, <laughs> <laughs> the big green station wagon. And I remember arguing on because they needed to fill up. Because that thing, that family truckster station wagon, Linda got 13 miles to the gallon downhill Woo with the wind. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't want to talk about uphill, huh? <laughs> you know, in town, seven miles to oh the gallon. Oh, my gosh. But gas was 30 cents a gallon. And I remember my mom and dad arguing because they needed gas, and mm -hmm. he wanted to pull off and get gas, and she kept saying, no, don't get one on the interstate. If you go in town, it'll be two cents cheaper. cheaper. Two cents cheaper. Yeah. So they were arguing over whether they were going to pay 28, 29, or 30 cents a gallon for, wow. uh, for gasoline. Well, then the first oil embargo, mm -hmm. OPEC uh, deal happens, and the price of gas doubled. Yeah. So it went from 30 cents a gallon 
to 60 cents a gallon. And now we sit here and think, wow, that would be no big well, deal. But at the time... Yeah, it was a big deal. It was doubling the cost of, yes, of what yes. it took to, to fill, in, uh, fill up your tank of gas. Well, when you can tell the kids, it says, you know, when I was in high school, you could take a dollar mm -hmm. and go to the gas station and fill up. They didn't laugh. Gas was maybe 25 cents a gallon. Yeah. You got almost you know four gallons because it's never exactly 25 it's 25 and nine tenths or some bizarre <laughs> number and they washed your windshield mm -hmm. and if they pumped your gas in fact i don't even know if they would have allowed you to pump your gas right if you wanted to your own self right um they would check your all if you wanted it mm -hmm. and you could drive around all night long as we called it cruising maine <laughs> you know but they didn't and people made money mm-hmm with gas at that price there yeah. were people that owned stations or jobber ships that actually well it was it was a great very job very wealthy for kids some kids that, that <coughs> that's how they got started was doing the full service thing yeah Washing you worked at a gas station the that was the thing you know there was you didn't work necessarily at a fast food because there weren't fast foods right, right. you got a job at the gas station or you yeah. got a job at the grocery store or, you know, and is that what you were going like to do that. for the rest of your life? No. Most likely not. Some of them might have gone on to become a mechanic or maybe own or a shop. Or own the station. Own the station. You know? But most of them, they, they made some money. Yeah, you know, it was just it, like while I'm in high school, I work out the Chevron. Yeah. Well, well good for you. Yeah. You know, that's wonderful. I you guess today's equivalent would be the fast food places. Right, would be, right. Would be today's equivalent because there's, you know, I, I can't imagine what would happen if I pulled into a service station and had somebody want to do that. There aren't service yeah. stations. Yeah, they're just you know? fuel, fuel stations is yes. what they are now. And because and at the time that I was, uh, when I first got my license and started driving was mm -hmm. after these oil crises and that was one of the first things to go was the people right. doing that and everything became self-serve mm -hmm. and so i think i've always uh, pumped my own gas yeah but uh i think the most embarrassing thing i did was i had a scooter <laughs> you know and it had like a two gallon tank one and a half gallon tank uh -huh. and and gas was 60 70 cents a gallon and so i bought a gallon and a half Woohoo! big spender there i didn't have any cash <laughs> and so i made out a check <laughs> Boy. True story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> How much will that be? Well, it'll be a dollar forty-seven. Okay, I'm gonna make out a check. Are you sure you don't want anything else with that? <laughs> nope, just the gas. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, but yes. those, those were the. Those, those were, were the days. Yes, those those. But were it was the days. amazing when I was a kid. We would, you know, once in a while you go for a ride in the evening because there is no entertainment. This is means before I ever drove. Yeah. You know, a little kid. Well, let's just go cruising. You know, yeah. For whatever reason, your parents thought it was a big deal to go to Dairy Queen or something, and you, and there was a truck stop mm -hmm. there, and uh, it was the kind that. The upstairs, it was a two-story building, and the upstairs they apparently had bunk beds or something where truckers could stay and mm -hmm. go in and sleep or whatever. Yep. But I remember the big sign, and at that point, diesel was the crap. Mm -hmm. So it was therefore always cheaper than the gasoline. Right. So diesel could have been $0.08 cents or tw you know, $0.10, cents and gas was $0.12 cents or whatever per gallon. Yeah, yeah. You know, but now they got all they the additives. And they made money and, at those prices. Yeah, but now they you know, got all the phenomenal. additives and, and all that in it, and they got the DE, DEF and all that stuff. I mean, when I got my truck, which is diesel, mm, right? There was a nickel difference between diesel and regular. Mm. It ain't that way now. No, it is not. <laughs> I think diesel is special. Well, that's because they started making all the diesel vehicles so they can raise the price because now they have a lot more vehicles to put it in too. True, but I think diesel is on its way out. Um, Except for the bigger trucks. Right. Uh, but as far as your half-ton pickups and, and your consumer vehicles and stuff, the, the big shift now is to get rid of the gas engines and replace with batteries. And diesel was kind of a stopgap. I, uh, I read this week where, you know, for a while there you could go and order an F-150 half-ton pickup, and one of the engine options was was a, uh, a diesel. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going away, and it's being supplemented by the by the battery, the the you know the hybrid uh, models, and right. of course they have an all electric coming out. So diesel had come out as a as a means of because it gets better mileage. Like my truck will right. get, my sure. truck will get 28 miles to the gallon on yeah. the highway if I'm not towing or or hauling, 
which is pretty amazing in a half ton pickup truck when you think about my family truckster. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Back in the day, they got seven in town and 13 yeah. on the highway. And here I'm in a full-size pickup truck, and I'll get, you know, if I'm not towing or hauling 70-plus miles an hour, I'll get, you know, 24, 26, 27 miles per gallon. So we've come a long way with the with well, the technology. This, the but I think now that the gas engines are a lot more efficient, and now they're adding hybrids and batteries and all that kind of stuff to get the mileage up, and you don't have to have all the – because diesel is expensive. It's, it's expensive to change the oil. Because oh, there's yeah. a lot more oil in oh, it. Uh, yes. There's a lot more done with it. Uh, the, the fuel is more expensive. And then you got to add on top of that the DEF, mm -hmm. which you got you got to put DEF in it every so often, and that's expensive. And so, you, you know, you're... Are you really... Yeah. Yeah, you're getting to the point now where we're probably not... Now, if you need the towing capability and you right. tow there's trailers and stuff, sure. then you, you yeah. need to have the diesel truck because that's the most efficient way to, to haul heavy loads uh, still. But I think on the... On the automobile, the SUV, and on the uh, uh, light pickup truck, uh, it's either going to be a electric, or it's either going to be gas, gasoline powered, or hybrid, with mm -hmm. with battery assist or battery uh, involvement with it, and uh, and that's kind of where we're headed. headed I don't know now. about this electric because you know unless they get a car with a battery where you can charge that sucker in about ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, they're working on it. People are not going to be wanting, to, first of all, you better know where charging stations are. Yep. This part of the country, how many miles are we between, you know? And if you're going to go, let's say, 300 miles on a charge, and you better have a station there or mm -hmm. somewhere before you get there, nobody, when you're traveling, trying to get from point A to point B, is going to want to stand around for several hours waiting right. for their vehicle to charge up. That's right. That is nonsense. Well, and then you have the problems, uh, I think it was Chevy um, had a, I can't remember if it's the Bolt or the Volt. I think it's the Bolt, um, which is their all-electric. The Bolt is the all-electric. The Volt was the hybrid. I mean, it was electric with an engine. Um, they had a recall, and they did the recall to make some kind of repair adjustment. And now since they've done the recall, two of them have just blown up, caught fire. Whoa. So they're advising people, if you have one of these cars and have had the recall done, mm -hmm. park it out on the street and don't plug it in until they figure out what they did so oh. they can go back and fix it. So, look, you go back in history of the internal combustion engine. Did they have cars that collided and gas tanks that blew up and people that caught fire and problems they had with mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do they have those problems for the most part now? No. No. Because it's a developed right. technology. And electric is in the very, very early, early infant uh, Well, they better stages. figure out how to recycle some of this stuff, too, because you cannot have it sitting out in a field like the airplanes in Roswell. That's, like that's another thing. Like the picture of all You're the exactly vehicles right. in France, you know, that are sitting out there because there is nothing you can do with them. Yep. Well, what a waste, people. Yep, yep. No, you're exactly right. That's another aspect of the electrification of automobiles that nobody's talking about. Nobody's talking about the rare earth minerals that are needed to be mined to make the lithium-ion batteries to go into the cars. Well, all that mining, you know where like 90% of all that stuff is processed? Mm. China. Oh, goody. So they're mining all this stuff all around the world, and it all goes to China, and over 90% of the processing of this rare earth mineral to make this stuff is done in china mm -hmm. you know how friendly they are to us and, yeah you know and then we import it in for the battery so i think there's other things uh, there's hydrogen electric cars which basically mm -hmm. suck in air mm -hmm. as you're driving down the road combine it with the hydrogen to produce the electricity that's used to power the batteries that drive the car okay but as soon as you say hydrogen what do people think of Water, New Jersey, uh, Lakehurst, New Jersey, Meltdown, Hindenburg, yeah. you know, the yes. Hindenburg that blew up. So yes, the blimp. Hydrogen. You know, yeah, the blimp. I'm going to put that in a car. <laughs> yeah, so my car can blow up. <laughs> sure. You know, and, and then there's other battery technologies. There's solid state battery technology that they're working on and developing to get to the point that you're talking about to where mm -hmm. you go to the filling station. You plug it in, you run in, you go to the bathroom, you get some Smarties and a cup of coffee. And it and, better be charged in that amount it, of time, and it, too. And it's charged in that amount of time. So, we, I mean, we're in the infancy of the technology. Are we going to get there at some point in time? Yeah. Well, is it going to be 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? Yeah, but they Probably. keep acting like they want it done in moments. I know. And, and it's, that's not going to happen. It, you know, yeah. it can't. 
And we're still not, we still haven't figured out how you're going to haul semi tractor trailers. How are you going to run the diesel electric trains? How are you going to fly the airplanes? You know, how are you yes, going to get this yes. stuff? Yes. All around, how you uh, the boats that float across the ocean? With I really all the prefer crap from China, jet you know? fuel to go in my planes right now. I, you know, it's a little safer. I want to get there. Don't go experimental on me, boy. <laughs> hey, at no. the end of the day, when Richard Branson did his little launch that was up there, cool. what did he use to get up into the up into yeah. the space? It was a rocket. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> you know, that wasn't an electric powered space no, plane. No, it had a jet trail behind it. <laughs> yep. Pee. So, yeah. he anyway. ain't no dummy. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Hey, you know, that's one of our incredible stories of the day. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, the Simpsons predicted Richard Branson's trip in space. Oh, really? They did, yes. Uh, let me find the story here. Um, uh, the Simpsons correctly predicted another major event with 2014 episode showing Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic space flight. The Simpsons correctly predicted Sir Richard Branson's flight uh, in an episode before the businessman 70 launched himself towards the stars on Sunday. And the story's on the Daily Mail. And there's a picture mm -hmm. of the Simpsons oh image of him, you know, floating yeah. floating in his spaceship uh, up in space. Uh, well, up let me tell space. you, none of the kids that I had... Mm -hmm even knew who Richard Branson was or Virgin Galactic. Yeah. Because none of them pay any attention to what is going on in the world. Yep. Yep. And that is very sad. It is. You know. It is. They need to take some time and plant themselves in front of the television and watch the news. Yeah. Buy a newspaper. Yep. Listen to news programs somewhere it affects your lives you need to know a little bit about what's going on before it comes knocking at your door yeah you or, know or and there's plenty old enough to learn listen to ksvp listen to travis and yeah. uh, buck or or there's H all kinds Hannity of news or programs or on yeah. your stations mm -hmm. you know you don't have to get too high tech around looking for stuff and I, and i'm not saying those are the only people you should listen to no but find other other things yes, but, learn. but but listen to those too so, so if you have kids sitting at home get them interested in current events yeah what is going on you know when they're 16 they've got two years to be able to register to vote mm -hmm. they're going to be voting for stuff that they don't have a clue that's right what they're voting for or about or against or whatever yes yeah. and maybe the voting age should be raised because I'm sorry, they want to lower it? I don't Maybe disagree. they ought to raise it because I think they're not informed well enough to make an intelligent decision at yeah. that age. Yeah. If I, they have no clue who some I, of these people... I don't disagree. I, I didn't dare ask, you know, who the governor was or some of these other simple questions because if they didn't know, then I'd be beating my head on the wall. <laughs> you know. It'd be funny. But no, it wouldn't. It's very sad. Well, let me ask you this. We've got just a short time left. Uh, Aaron will be standing by here in just a minute. Um, anything specific with uh, Clean and Beautiful that you want to mention? Just still Yard of the Week. If you know of somebody that has a beautiful yard, great curb appeal, deserves to be nominated, um, give me a call. Okay. And um, how often do you make, is it every week? Every that, week, Yard of the Week. I, I, as soon as I started to ask that question. <laughs> you knew you were in trouble, yeah. <laughs> what time is Midnight Mass? <laughs> yeah. How do you call 911? What's the number for it? Uh-huh, yeah. All right, yes, once a week. <laughs> yes. How often do you hand out your Yard of the Week? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if we haven't gotten to your nomination yet, mm -hmm. don't think we're ignoring you. Mm -hmm. There is a list. Okay. Because we've had quite a few call for nominations. So Good. We, Good. Yes, that is. That's Because a few years ago, we tried this again. Well, not a few, two or three. And nobody called. And I'm thinking, wow. Yeah. But now you're We had the word out. But now, yeah. And so. Good. We have a list. Good. So don't think that, you know, we're ignoring you. Just hang in there. We'll get to you. All right. Linda, thank you very much. You're welcome. Are, are you uh, Ashton Kutcher bought yes. a ticket on the Richard Branson thing? I believe that. And then his wife said, no. Oh. We have a family and kids. You're not doing that. So he had to give his ticket back or oh, sell dear. his ticket back. So did you want to buy Ashton Kutcher's ticket on the yeah, next uh, sure. Virgin Galactic flight?
If I had that kind of money, I could make all kinds of improvements on my house. Thank you very much. <laughs> you wouldn't blow it on a trip to a four minute trip to weightlessness. I think it would be kind of cool. Yeah. But for that kind of money, I don't have disposable income. Yeah. And if I had that kind of, kind of money, what, $250,000? Somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah, I could make great improvements on my home. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So, Ashton, you'll have to find somebody else to sell the tickets. Yeah, it's not going to be me. It's not going to be Too Linda. Bad. <laughs> All right. But I bet he could get rid of it pretty easy. Oh, I'm sure somebody will buy it. So They may already have. That's that's true. We haven't heard that yet, but it yes. could be. Linda, thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll see you next time. We're uh,